Hey, shalom, 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 grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace, family. Um, I'm just jumping on really quick, and I just want to reiterate truth according to his word. I'm just jumping on really quick, family. And um, I just want to reiterate truth according to his word, according to the gospel, according to the teaching, and according to the understanding of the gospel, which is the death, burial, and it's the resurrection of Christ. Um, the understanding of the gospel, the understanding uh, of the teaching of the word of God, is that you believe in that Christ died for your sins and you believe it that he resurrected for your justification. We can't add nor take away from the simplicity of the gospel. It is simple. But we have a lot of brothers and a lot of sisters wishing to pervert the gospel of Christ by trying to add extra stimulation on what must you do to be saved. You can't add nor take away from that. Grace and peace. Grace and peace, Mr. Tomorrow. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We can't add nor take away from that. We cannot add nor take away from the simplicity of the gospel it is finished that's why the word said add not unto his word unless you be reproved and you be found to be a liar you know they say that you have to do s y and z in order to be saved no that's not the case they say you have to keep a feast day in order to be saved that is not the case they say you have to keep a dietary law in order to be saved that is not the case they say that you have to be circumcised according to the custom of moses if you want to be saved that is not the case now you adding and taking away from the words of the father Christ said, this is the works that thou must do. Listen, this is the works that you must do. You have to believe it on him who was sent. Period. Miss Brenda, grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace. Once again, family, Christ said, this is the works that you must do. You must believe it on him who was sent. And he went on to say, everyone that believeth in me, will receive the gift of eternal life. He didn't say nothing about a feast day. He didn't say nothing about a Sabbath. He didn't say nothing about uh, being circumcised. He said, if you want to know the requirement, he said, if you want to know what required of you, believe it on him who was sent. Believe it in me and thou shalt be saved. If you believe it in me, if you're willing to believe in your heart and confess with thy mouth, you will then receive the spirit of Christ. I will baptize myself inside of you to help lead and guide you into all truth. You will then become a new creature in me. You will become a new creation in me. You will be born again. A self that a man is born again, Nicodemus, you can't even see the kingdom of God. You have to be born again. And you will be born again if you're willing to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. That the worst that you must do is believe it on him. Who was signed. So I will be reading from the book of Luke, chapter 9. Hallelujah. Please reshare the video. 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 The book of Luke, chapter 9. The book of Luke, chapter 9. The book of Luke, chapter 9. We're going to speak about denying ourselves, family. We have to understand how important and how paramount. It is for you to learn how to deny yourself. The only way that you is able to deny yourself is by submitting and by surrendering to the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to say that it's going to be easy, family, but we at least have to try to deny ourselves. We have to deny ourselves. We have to at least try to deny ourselves. You may not want to forgive, but you have to forgive because Christ forgave. How are you going to say you Christ-like? How are you going to say that you believe in Christ, but you're not willing to forgive your wife? <laughs> Wives, you're not even willing to forgive your husband. You're not even willing to forgive your neighbor. But Christ forgave those who were killing him on the cross. You have to reciprocate when you have been, when you, when, when, when you will receive the spirit of Christ. You have to reciprocate. Because the spirit of Christ will begin to lead and guide you into all truth. You have to forgive. You have to. You can only forgive when you're willing to deny yourself. Your flesh ain't going to want to forgive. Your flesh going to be mad still. Your flesh going to be envious still. Your flesh going to want to hold on to grudges. But you have to surrender and submit to the Holy Spirit. You have to deny yourself. You may not want to give because your flesh is a little stingy still. You are a little selfish still. It's all about you still. huh? You may not want to give. But that brother or that sister need the ride, need a helping hand, need an extra shirt, need a pair of pants, need a few dollars in their pocket to get them something to eat. You have to learn to tell yourself, no, I have to give. 
I have to forgive. I have to be kind. I have to be gentle. I have to show mercy. I have to show love. I have to be loving. You have to forgive. But you have to be willing to deny yourself, family. Your flesh going to get in the way. What did he say? What did she say? Why is she looking at me? Why is he looking at me? You want to fight? You want to go in the streets? This is what your flesh going to want to do. But you have to tell yourself, no. A soft answer turns away wrath. I can't fight you. I can't hit you. I can't swing on you. A soft answer turned away wrath. I apologize if I ever offended you. Do you accept my apology, my brother? Or my sister? But in order to be led by his spirit, in order to deny yourself, you have to submit and surrender to the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. And I'm speaking to myself first and foremost. We got to learn to tame our tongue, family. They say sticks and stones may break our bones, but words never hurt. That is a lot. Once it come out of your mouth, you can't take that back. <laughs> the flesh will heal. You could bruise the flesh right now. You can bruise the flesh right now. It'll heal in about three, four days. But that which you that but that which you spoken of out of your mouth, I'ma remember that for a lifetime. Words do hurt. That's why we have to learn to tame our tongue by denying ourselves. Um Hallelujah, family. I will begin at the book of Luke, chapter 9. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 18 to uh, 27. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 18 to 27. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 18 to 27. Family, um, support is needed. Um, support is needed like never before. If you're a cheerful giver, and if you don't mind supporting your brother who's going you know, through it a little bit, um, I, you can also DM me or I can leave the information through the comment section. That's if you're a cheer forgiver and you don't mind helping out your brother. Um, it's not required, but of course, we all we all him to help one another, give to one another, forgive one another, love one another, care for one another, be kind to one another, be gentle to one another. Period. <laughs> so um, that's what it's all about. It's about denying ourselves. It's about denying ourselves. Once again, family, the book of Luke, chapter 9. Thank you, Miss Brenda. Hallelujah. Verses 18 to 27. I don't have much time, so I'm going to get straight to it. Um, I'm speaking to myself first and foremost. I'm not perfect, you know, and I still have to deny myself as well. I may do understand the simplicity of the gospel. I may do understand the word from Genesis to the Revelation, but still I have to apply what is being taught as well. I have to submit and surrender to the Holy Spirit as well. So um, I'm not excluded. Neither are you. So let's, walk, let's focus on denying ourselves and, and by submitting to the power that comes from the Spirit of Christ, which is love. This is Jesus about to um, lay down his life for his brothers and for his sisters. And this this one, Peter put him to the side and said, listen, you don't have to do that. You, you don't have to do that. Now, it's, it, if Christ was selfish and stingy and inconsiderate, he would have probably took Peter upon his offer. But because he was walking in self-denial, being the prime example, he was able to rebuke Peter and say, listen, I came to bring forth salvation. There's no greater love than this that one should lay down his life for, for his friends. And I'm going to show you by example how you should deny yourself as well. Hallelujah. I'm going to get started now, family. I don't have much time. And it reads. It's a, and it came to pass... As Jesus was alone praying that his disciples was with him. And he has them saying, who do people say that I am? Who do they say that I am? So while Christ was alone praying, he looked to his disciples, he looked to his brothers. And he asked them, who do they say that I am? What is the word on the street? What are they talking about? What are the people saying? Who do they say that I am? Do they know that I am God in the flesh? Do they know that I'm, I'm, I'm Emmanuel? Do they understand how I'm able to walk on water, heal the sick, raise the dead? Do they even understand why I tell people, if you loveth me, keep my commandments? Who do they say that I am? 
Do you know why I'm able to turn water to wine? Do you know why I'm able to heal the sick and raise the dead? Do you know why I'm able to rebuke the sea and the wind? You think I'm just some man? You think I'm just some prophet? Do you think I'm just some king? Do you not know without controversy great is the mystery of godliness that God will manifest in the flesh? That we should call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us, healing the sick, raising the dead, walking on water. Who do they say that I am? Do you know who I am? Do you not know that I have a duality within me? Do you not know that I'm 100% the creator that is wrapped up in his creation? Do you know that I am God in the flesh? That a child shall be born, a son shall be given. He will be the almighty power, the everlasting God, and the prince of peace. Do you know who I am? Huh? I'm 100% God. And I'm 100% man, flesh and blood. In the flesh. Miss Cox, grace and peace, hallelujah. And it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were, were, were with him. And he asked them, saying, Whom say the people say that I am? They answered, said, Some say that you're John the Baptist. Wrong. But some say that you are Elijah. And others are saying that you are one of the old prophets that has risen again. So they were saying that he's Elijah, he's John the Baptist, or he's one of the old prophets that had been risen again, like Jeremiah or, or Jonah or, or Isaiah. All of those answers are wrong. He's God in the flesh. He came to save us from our sins. He came to be a perfect sacrifice. Who else perfect other than God himself? Huh? I'm not. You're not. We're not. So God took on his own creation to save his people from their sins. That sacrifice had to be without sin. It had to be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, or any such thing. It had to be perfect in order to atone for the sin of humanity. I couldn't do it. I'm not qualified. Abraham was not qualified. Adam was not qualified. Isaac was not qualified. Jacob was not qualified. Noah was not qualified. Moses was not qualified to atone for the sin of the world. So God took on his own creation. God became flesh without controversy. Great is the mystery of Godliness. God manifests himself in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, and was received back up into glory. Who do they say that I am? They said some say you John the Baptist. Grace and peace, Miss Rachel. They said some say you Elijah. And others are saying that you one of the old prophets that had risen again. He said unto them, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am then? Forget what they're saying. Who do you say that I am? You've been walking with me. You've been talking with me. You say you know me. Well, who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said, the Christ of God. Peter knew. Peter said, you are the Christ of God. Emmanuel. God in the flesh. The anointed one. That was anointed before the foundation of the world. To save his people from thy sin. You is God in the flesh. Peter said this. I know why you're able to walk on water. <laughs> Which is impossible for mankind to do. When the last time you walked on water? When the last time you took a walk on a beach? When the last time you took a walk on a lake? And I mean literally too. I ain't mean talking walking on no sidewalk. When the last time you took a walk on the beach? Walking on waves? When the last time you took a walk on a lake? On the lake? On the body of water? When the last time you turned water to wine? When the last time you healed the sick? When the last time you raised the dead? When the last time? Peter said, you the, you, Peter said, you the God man. You God in the flesh. You Emmanuel. Peter knew. Peter knew. And, 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 and he straightly charged them 
and commanded them to tell no, no man the thing. Saying the son of man must suffer many things. And he'll be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and of the scribes. And he'll be slain and he'll be raised again the third day. He said the son of man will be killed and he'll be raised again the third day. He'll be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and he'll be slain. And he'll be raised again on the third day. I have to lay down my life so that you're able to live. I have to deny myself. You have to deny yourself. You can't lay down your life if you're not willing to deny yourself. I won't be able to lay down my life if I'm not willing to deny myself. I can't forgive you if I'm not willing to deny myself because my flesh will get in the way. My flesh will hold on to grudges. My flesh will want to talk about you. My flesh is going to want to render evil for evil. But I have to deny myself. I have to learn to deny myself. And we can only deny ourselves by submitting to the Holy Spirit. Our flesh can't do it. Our flesh want to fight. Our flesh want to cause strife and division. Our flesh want to talk about you. Our flesh love the gossip. Our flesh want to render evil for evil. I don't want to forgive you. I know you, my wife. I love you to death, but I can't forgive you. Because my flesh is telling me not to forgive you. But Christ told me I have to deny myself. So I have to forgive you. I got to love you. I have to be humble. I have to be meek. I have to show mercy. I have to be peacemakers. My flesh ain't going to want me to do it. Because in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. When we wish to do good, evil is present. What if that evil nature that is present, our flesh? That's why Christ said you have to deny yourself. You have to deny yourself. I know you broke. I know you need an extra few dollars. I know you just seen that young lady drop her wallet. I know you just seen that young man drop his wallet. But you have to give it back. You have to deny yourself. That is not yours. That is not yours. Treat others how you would want to be treated. If I have dropped my wallet and you found it, I will pray that you will return it back to the owner. Therefore, if you drop your wallet and I came across it, I would have to give it back unto you because that's not mine. You can only do that by denying yourself. Christ was only able to lay down his life because he walked in self-denial. He walked in love. <laughs> he wasn't selfish. He wasn't inconsiderate. He wasn't stingy. He wasn't conniving. He wasn't two-faced. He wasn't devilish. He walked in love. And there's no greater love than this, that one should lay down his life for his family. Right? And he was saying, the son of man, or I must suffer many things, and I have to be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and I have to be slain. But I will be raised again on the third day. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross daily, and let him follow after me. So if you want to follow after Christ, if you want to be like Christ, you too have to deny yourself. I have to forgive my wife. <laughs> because Christ forgave it to me. I have to love my neighbor. Because Christ loved me. I have to be humble. Because Christ was humble. I have to walk in self-denial. Because Christ walked in self-denial. You have to reciprocate, family. You have to be willing to deny yourself. We got to tame the tongue. <laughs> we have to learn self-control. We can't render evil for evil. We can't listen to our flesh. Because in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. We have to deny ourselves. I can't lay down with another man's wife. I can't. I can't take that which, is, which does not belong to me. Because I have to deny myself. Christ walked in self-denial. Therefore, I have to walk in self-denial. By denying myself. What if thyself that I must deny? I will flesh. <laughs> Please reshare the video, family. I will flesh.
He said unto them all, If any man willeth to come after me, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross daily and follow after me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall find it. If you're willing to lose your life for his sake, you will find it. Trust me. Be willing to lose your life. Be willing to lose your life, family. Don't try to hold on to this life. Don't try to hold on to the flesh. Be willing to lose it for his name's sake. Walk in love, even when your flesh want to hate. Forgive, even when your flesh want to walk in unforgiveness. Be humble, even when your flesh want to be arrogant. Be kind, even when your flesh want to be mean. We have to learn to deny ourselves. And you can only deny yourself by meditating on the spirit of Christ. Look how Christ walked. That's the prime example. He walked in self-denial. He forgave when he was being killed. He was giving. He fed 5,000 people with bread and fishes. He wasn't inconsiderate. He wasn't selfish. He wasn't stingy. But God so loved the world that he gave us only. But God's son, he gave his last. But you're not willing to give your last. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. He gave us his last. But some of you not willing to give you give others your last. You got at least eight hundred dollars in your pocket, fifteen hundred in your bank account. That brother's hungry. That sister is thirsty. That brother's in need. That sister need help. But you're not willing to give ten dollars. But you say you Christ like. But God so loved the world that He gave us His only begotten Son. But you're not willing to give anything. It don't even have to be monetary. It could be the ride. It could be a helping hand. It could be prayer. It could be a shirt. It could be an extra jacket. It's been cold lately. You got 10, 15 jackets in your closet that you do not wear. But you're not willing to give anything. Because you're not of Christ. And you have not yet perfected walking in self-denial. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what, for what is a man advantage that if he gain the whole world and loses himself or be cast away? So what would you profit if you gain all of the world but yet lose your soul? What would you profit? You gain the whole world. You got houses. You got cars. You're a celebrity, you're on TV, you're on magazines, you're all of the radio. But what will it profit you if you gain the whole world but yet lose your soul because you have not yet repented? You was not walking in self-denial. You never gave. You never forgave. You walked in hate. You walked in, you walked in lust, fornicating, laying with people's wives, prostituting. What will it profit you if you gain the whole world but yet lose your soul behind it? You have to repent. You have to believe it in Christ. You have to receive the spirit of Christ because the word teaches if you don't have his spirit, you're not none of his. What will it profit a man if he gain the whole world but yet lose his soul? I don't want $15 million if I have to lose my soul. I don't want the wealth if I have to lose my soul. I don't want the houses and the cars if I have to lose my soul. I don't want the world if I have to lose my soul. You can have that. You can have that because the kingdom of God is at hand. I want eternal life. That which will never perish. For what, for what, for what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world but yet lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words of him, the Son of Man, shall be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in fathers and in his fathers and of the Holy Spirit. But I tell you the truth, there will be some standing here which shall not taste death at all until they see the kingdom of God. I want to be that individual who do not taste death at all. What it's speaking about is not the physical death, but the lake of fire being cast away. There are some that are standing here. There are some that is on this live right now that shall not taste death at all. Why? Because you are willing to lose your life for his name's sake. And Christ said you will find it because you will not taste death at all. Period. Um, that's about it, family. We have to learn how to deny ourselves. That is the purpose of this message. I just want to encourage you to deny yourself. 
Our flesh will get in the way. Our flesh will buck up at times. Our flesh is self-centered. Our flesh is selfish. Our flesh is stingy. Our flesh is conniving. Our flesh is deceitful. Our flesh is arrogant. Our flesh is prideful. Our flesh is... Uh... Our flesh has a lot going on. In order to be Christ-like, in order to be of the family of Christ, we have to walk in self-denial. Christ walked in self-denial. You too have to walk in self-denial. Christ walked in love. You too have to walk in love. Christ forgave. You have to forgive. Christ showed mercy and he was compassionate. Therefore, you have to show mercy and you have to be compassionate. It's about reciprocating family. It's about reciprocating. You know, we have too many people are getting divorces because we're not forgiving our spouses. You know, we have too many people who are, are at odds with their family members, their kids, their parents, because we're not being forgiving. We have too many people who are in need because brothers like you and I is not giving as we should. It don't always have to be money. It could be it could it could be a shirt. Yesterday I just gave uh not to be all in my personal business, but I seen a whole bunch of homeless people without. So I gave like at least fifteen to twenty T shirts that I, I, I rarely wear and I just gave it to them. It don't always have to be money. Anything, a toothbrush. Uh, personal hygiene, um, deodorant, uh, toothpaste, socks, underwears, prayer, money. We just got to learn how to give because he gave us his only begotten son so that we can receive the gift of eternal life. Amen. Um, that's about it, family. I pray that you reshare the video. Please 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 reshare the video. Um, once again, if you don't mind helping out your brother, if you can, if you are a church forgiver, you can also do that as well. If you don't mind, if you live by the Spirit of Christ, um, prayer is always needed as well, family. Um, I come on each and every day for the past couple of years to bring forth the gospel of Christ, whether I got a headache, whether I'm sick, whether I have a stuffy nose, whether I'm frustrated, whether I'm tired, whether I'm exhausted, whether I don't feel like it still bring forth the word of God the word of God to the family of Christ so um with that being said y'all have a blessed day today grace and peace reshare the video shalom